Okay, so good afternoon. Thanks, Lawrence, Miranda, Greg, for the organization and this great meeting. It's always a pleasure to come. And uh, for the end of the day, I will talk about drug screening in Leishmania infected macrophage. And at the end, I will bring you a new concept that I think is a new concept. Exactly what uh, Paul mentioned, uh, we should think of the host cell. And so if you think of therapies against Leishmania, these are the main five drugs which are currently used. And all of them have some kind of advantages, some are difficult, uh, they have side effects and so on, and I don't want to go into the details because I think probably Philippe will talk about, about them tomorrow. The problems that you can face when you develop drugs are the following. First, you have to deal with different Leishmania species, uh, different pathologies, cutaneous, visceral, mucocutaneous, diffuse, leishmaniasis, and so on. And all of them have a small, dif have a small differences, which makes that it, some drugs can work with one species, but not with the other one. You have different life cycle when you want to do the screen. Should you screen against promastigot, axenic amastigot, isolated amastigot, or intramacrophage uh, amastigot? You have animal models to test your drugs, and they can be mice, hamsters, dogs, and then you will face toxicology in humans, which will be certainly different than any kind of toxicology in mouse or in hamsters or dogs. Then, at the end, let's say you have a drug, and the efficacy can be different in different places of the world. This is a case with miltefazin, where you have a difference between East Africa and uh, India. So, as an example, if you take here, miltefazin IC50, for miltefazin is different between amazonensis, Brazilian, it's this more or less the same for amazonensis, Brazilensis, Aguayanensis, but it's very different for Donovan. And uh, this has been done against intracellular mastigot, and you can see the IC90, which is also different. So you have, uh, depending on your drug, you can have IC50, which are slightly different. And what you expect and what you are looking for is really a low IC50, okay? To have less drug, to inject less drug as possible. Then if you do your screen, and I think that's a paper which came out years ago, uh, where you, they started with 26,000 compounds and tested them on promastigot or intracellular amastigot. And I think it's quite interesting because out of these compounds, they, against promastigot, they found around 100 hits. And against amastigot, they found 123, more or less the same number of hits. But then they crossed. So the hits which were found in promastigot, they were tested on amastigot. And they found that only five compounds were working on amastigot. Whereas if you take this hit which worked against amastigot, then, if you test them on promastigot, you can see that around 50% were also working on promastigot. So clearly, if you start to develop a drug or look for a drug, you should forget about, about promastigot. At least go for axenic amastigot, and if possible, in intracellular amastigot, which means the screen is a lot more difficult to set up a specific screen. That's uh, what we can say, that we, what we can say that possibly you go for intracellular parasite in macrophage. It's more relevant because you, in, you, you in fact, deal also with the metabolism and the effect of the macrophage. If you can, because of you have already any kind of toxicity which has been known or approved or FDA approved, you can repurpose drugs like miltefazine, amphotericin B. Most of the drugs which are using are repurposed drugs. In fact, there are no new drugs except one which is in development. Um, you can confirm in the correct animal model, which can be quite difficult. Uh, possibly, ideally, it would be nice if your drug is active against different Lesmania species, and it can be a neural drug or cream, which would be better than an IV uh, injected drugs. So that's why we started to do some uh, repurposing, and uh, we set up a system where we had uh, intracellular amastigot screening in the macrophage. And so, it took, took us some time. So the only thing we did really, which was manually done, was collecting bone marrow and extracting um, cell bone marrow-derived macrophage and put them in culture. 
then everything else was done by a, a system which was fully automated. So we have macrophage, isolated macrophage, then put them in the system, checked, differentiated them with uh, MCSF, certain number of days. They were put in culture wells for 37 degrees, then infected with parasites. We changed the temperature because we work with Leishmania goyenensis, which infect better at 30, 35 than 37. Culture the parasite, the drug was added, and then the plate and the cells, sorry, the cells were fixed, stained, and we acquired the data. So <coughs> here, this is a system. So on, the only thing is, was taking my, my technicians, they took the bone marrow, and then everything was done in a non automatic uh, setup. So if you look uh, what we did, then we did some kind of staining of the cell. Okay, we have a plate, and on the plate you can stain. And what you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but you have here DAPI staining. And in DAPI staining you can see the nucleus of the macrophage, and possibly, if the light is... Uh, then you can see really the amastigot inside the macrophage. So that's the setup. Then uh, what we did, we do a specific staining for the cytoplasm to see the quality of the cell. And this is done with a phalloidine Alexa 488. And then you can see really the macrophage here and uh, with a cytoplasmic stain. Then you make an overlay between the nucleus of the macrophage, the nuclei, DAPI staining, where you can see the nucleus of the macrophage and the amastigot. Then you, we removed all all the image from the image we remove for example if you have a nucleus which is alone like this one we remove all the cells which were outside because that would give you just partial data so we took only the cells which were full cells with a correct cytoplasm a correct nucleus and the correct amastigot inside so for example we remove this one remove this one remove that remove that and so on well, so we clean up the image. And then we can start to, you stain, you, you do it, you process your image in an artificial way. So you have this kind of image where you can see, and you put the DAPI staining of the nucleus in pink, for example, the amastigot in black or violet, and the cytoplasm. And then the machine can count, can count the number of amastigots, the number of macrophage, and so on. Okay. I go quickly into the, if you want, I can send you the paper because I'm not sure it's easy, you can get easily this paper. Anyway, so what you have here, this is just, for example, non-treated, infected, non-treated, miltefosin treated, so you remove the amastigot here, non-treated, amphotericin B treatment. So we set up the system with the controls where we have the controls positive uh, drugs, I mean, killing drugs, like uh, miltefazine and uh, amphotericin B. So we checked that all amphotericin B and what you have to do, that your system is working. So either for amphotericin B, so the IC50 that we found is 0.251, which is in the range of what was published for Amazonensis, Brazilensis, Donovani, and Major. So we, you do this kind of curve. We did the same kind of curve with uh, miltefazine. So miltefazine, here we end up with an IC50 of 4.1, which is in the range of what was published for. So we know that the system is robust. It's robust in terms of image analysis. Everything is automated. And we know that it gives in our system the expected IC50. Yes? The, the effect you see is in the number of amastigos and macrophage, or you can, and also the number of macrophages that do not have any part. So you have a system where, <coughs> so you have a system, we tested it with drugs, but you could do it with any kind of, for example, supplement, uh, whatever. And in this case, what you have, you can have the number of macrophage here, the, n the number of parasites per macrophage, yeah. and here is your drug. And you can see that according to what you are doing, you have either a total number of macrophages, you can increase the number of macrophages depending on the treatment and so on. And you have this kind of curve and you have to play a bit, say, okay, I take these conditions. 
and we took the conditions which were given according to what we observed with uh, uh, amphotericin B and miltefazine. We defined the quantity of MCSF. So before we had a pretty strong solid uh, QC just to be sure that what we would observe would be uh, correct. Okay. So what I think it can be applied okay, for drugs, but it can be applied to any kind of supplement. You can say vitamins or whatever. And uh, then you end up with this kind of analysis where you have here a 96 well plate and you take 40, 49 images per well. So there is no bias of somebody who is counting the number of amas he got uh, on each slide. So the machine does it for you. And uh, so if every time we put DMSO, with DMSO, because uh, we solubilize the drug at 10 micromolar uh, in DMSO, so in DMSO we don't see it here correctly, but you have amastigot, embisome here, amphotericin B, sorry, uh, then we don't have any kind of uh, macro, um, parasite in the macrophage, and then we have the hits, and the hits are analyzed for according to the number of, macroph uh, number of parasites we find per macrophage. And also, the killing of the macrophage. We want to be sure that uh, we can measure the number of macrophage, the number of amastigot per macrophage. And you end up with this kind of uh, analysis where we analyze a press week library, just a proof of concept, so it's over 1,000 compounds. It's done pretty easily. Uh, and you do some kind of heat map. You do a heat map where you have the number of parasites per macrophage. And uh, you have here DMSO, embisome, or amphotericin B, and you can see according to the, of the color, you have the number, for example, when it's red, you have low number of parasites per macrophage or none, and when it starts to be yellow or green, like this, like this one, it means that you have no killing. So, uh, use, using this, uh, this approach, we screen these 1,000 compounds, and uh, we end up with a series of uh, compounds which are known. Uh, we use every, we in fact on this table, it's all the compounds which that display over 69% of antiparasitic activity. Interestingly, we didn't find miltefazine, okay? Miltefazine is under, which is quite interesting. It's in the library, but it's under the 69% of killing, okay? Well, we find pentamidine in this case, which is 80%. This is two screen that we did. Uh, and you find a series of molecules <coughs> which, uh, which, are quite, uh, which could be quite useful. That was done at 10 micromolar. 10 micromolar is not what you expect to use on the field. If you can lower, you want to calculate the IC50, the IC90, to be sure that you have, if you inject it, you inject a small amount of you, as low as possible. So for these 14 compounds, we calculated the IC50 or IC90, and the best one were antimycin D, dilsufiram, which is, if you are alcohol dependent, it's what you can take, which is an oral drug. There's some kind of side effect, unfortunately, but uh, you can see the one are the best one, the best one are probably these two. Uh, then from that, you can go and check exactly what are the drugs, what are the side effects, so we know that some of them we can take them and test it. Um, the NDI said, oh, well, it's not so interesting. Anyway. <laughs> but what is interesting, okay, you can take this drug and say, what are the structure of this drug? Okay, you repurpose. But when you repurpose, maybe you can know now, you can know the structure. And for all these, all these drugs, depending on you have database where you can see what they are, you have the structure. So we could test them. Some of them have not, not been tested against Leishmania, so it could be worth testing them in an animal model. But what you can see is among the drugs which are against Leishmania, they are clo closely related compounds. And you can generate some kind of tree according to the structure from antimycin, disulfiram, and so on. And then, based on that, if you want, you can start to take the compounds and start to modify with medical chemistry. So I think that's quite, that's a way, one way where maybe we will go in the next, uh, in the next step. So it means we go back from repurposing to specific drugs, but at least we go with compounds that we know they can be active. This said, 
I think what we have to consider is it's exactly what Paul said before. And I think you gave me a nice, nice introduction on the potential role of host, of host factors in treatment failures and relapses. So when you look at the definition of treatment failure, it's clinical symptoms which do not improve at the end of the complete treatment, non-responders, or reappear after initial cure, initial cure, so like relapses. And failure can be due to different things. Most of the time, people study parasite. Say, okay, the parasite is drug resistant in the parasite. You have genetic polymorphism between the strains. You have mutation which occur, gene amplification, chromosomal, uh, chromosomal aneuploidy. But you should also consider the whole cell. The immune status of the whole cell can influence the way you will react to your drug. Genetic polymorphism of the host, that's clear. The nutritional status of the host, the microbiome, can influence the way you will, uh, you will react to the drug. And the drug itself, the redox status of the drug, the quality of the drug. Sometimes the drugs are leftovers, they can be oxidized, they are not good. And if they are not efficient, they will influence the drug resistant. Parasite will stay and will not be killed, and so on. So, and pharmacokinetics, again, if the drug is not is is uh, is eliminated quickly, we stay at so, a low level, it will influence the parasite, uh, it can induce parasite dormancy, and the parasite will stay uh, in the, you will not kill the parasite. So I think these three, they are separated between one, two, and three, but I think they, they can interact. So to the risk factor in Leishmaniasis, this is uh, David, okay. Uh, the different factors which can influence uh, the outcome of leishmaniasis. I think we should always consider drug treatment. In this case, depending on what you do with your drugs, like you, you will induce specific transcription factor like NRF2. For antimony, probably this is one of the reasons why you have drug relapse or drug resistance, because here you activate NRF2 and you induce uh, ABCB6. So this is my group. Uh, only girls, except, <laughs> I don't know why, he just left, okay, too many girls, I still have Dimitri, Dimitri did the, the drug screen, in fact, with Ono who left my group, and all the ABCB6 work and NLF2 work was done by Marta uh, Reverte. And uh, strong collaboration, in fact, for ICPMS, with uh, Aurélien Thomas, and a collaboration with Steve on Leishmania RNA virus that I uh, will mention uh, tomorrow. Thanks for your attention.